Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a customizable enclosure generator using OpenSCAD. Before I introduce today's video, I just wanna give a big shout out and thank you to 3dprintingcanada.com that's partnered with me in order to supply filament for any video that I do showing 3D printing technology. If you're looking to buy 3D printing supplies and you're located in Canada, check out 3dprintingcanada.com. I've put their information and links in the description below. When I introduced OpenSCAD a few videos ago, one of the projects I was looking to making with it was a customizable enclosure generator. That way, when I create DIY projects with electronics or other small components, I can make an enclosure and 3D print it so that I have the perfectly sized space or box for the project that I'm working with. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a parametric design or one that uses parameters so that you can easily change the dimensions of an enclosure box and generate a new model that can be 3D printed. So without further ado, let's jump into it. We're going to use the hull function a lot in this tutorial. So if you haven't checked it out before, take a look at the documentation. To show you how it works, I've created a little script here, which is basically going to declare a bunch of little cylinders. I put the number of cylinders, the radius of each cylinder and the height as separate parameters. And then I created a little for loop here, which is going to take 360 degrees, divide it by the number of cylinders that we have and create a cylinder at every one of those equal distances. As you can see from the preview, three equally spaced cylinders gives us a triangular shape. And if we're to change that number of cylinders, we're going to get a different shape as you would expect from equal sides. Four is a square, five is a pentagon, six is a hexagon, etc. Now, if we're to wrap that for loop in the hull function, what we get is a border around the perimeter of those shapes. Because we use cylinders as opposed to squares, it creates a nice rounded corner. You can see here, we basically get an equilateral triangle with rounded corners that are the radius of the cylinder. We can change our dimensions to get a different height. And no matter what height we choose, we get a wrapped 3D shape that follows the basic dimensions of those posts that we've chosen. If we change the radius of it, we can get sharper or rounder corners and we can get different heights. And so the whole function is incredibly versatile. If we were to change the number of cylinders as we did before, you can see we get a nice square rectangular prism, pentagon, hexagon, etc. And that's the basis of what we're going to do to create this enclosure generator. This is a look at what the finished enclosure looks like. As you can see, it comes with a nice lip around the edge for the lid to fit in nice and flat. And it also comes with screw holes so that the lid can be screwed on. So let me show you what it takes to get started. I started by declaring the dimensions that I want the finished box to be, and then a bunch of extra dimensions for things like the radius of the corners, the thickness of the walls, the diameter of the posts that are going to be screwed into, and the holes that the screws are going to fit into. I also declared variables for the lid thickness, the lip which is going to be from the outside edge to let it sit inside nice and flush, and the tolerance so that it won't be too tight for 3D printing. This module that I declared here is going to form the basis of what we do. And if you take a look at it in detail, what it does is create a cylinder at each of our dimensions that we specified width, length, and height. It takes an X, Y, and Z position, as well as a height and a radius for each of the cylinders. Then it simply takes the negative of the X, the negative Y, so that it can create cylinders around the origin as you would expect. In order to actually generate those, we just need to create a call to the post function and fill in the details of what the width, length, height, etc. are going to be. If I use the parameters that I've already declared, you can see here that it creates a cylinder in each of those coordinates. And now if I wrap that in the hull command, you can see it actually creates a box. And that's the basis that we're going to use to create all of this project. To create the outer box, we're simply going to declare those X, Y, Z height and corner radius positions. And as you can see here, I've taken the width and length divided by two because we're putting it around the origin. And I've also subtracted the corner radius because we don't want the box to get bigger or smaller as we change those corner radius values. By subtracting the corner radius from it, it will be added on with the hull command and that, and so it doesn't need to be altered. The height, of course, the Z position is zero because we want to start it flat on the surface 
radius and then the height and radius are going to be formed from our parameters above. Once our original box is created, you can see here, all we need to do, go in and adjust those parameters that we declared at the very top, and we can have any size box that we'd like. This is the incredibly powerful and simple way that OpenSCAD lets us create flexible designs that are very easy to change with just a couple keystrokes. You can see here, if we adjust the radius, we can get a much rounder box or one that's almost virtually square, which of course we could do with the cube command, but we want to have a little more aesthetically pleasing, which is also easier to print than having those sharp corners. To create the hollow for the box, we're simply gonna create another one of these post calls, which is gonna create the same shape, but a little bit smaller. As you can see here, I just copied and pasted, and all I needed to do was subtract the wall thickness from the X and Y dimensions, and also raise the height of the starting point for the Z to the wall thickness. When we preview it, you can see that our hollow ends up showing up as a filled in shape, and that's because we haven't yet subtracted it from our original box. So as you can probably guess, we just need to use the difference function and wrap it around those two shapes, preview it, and you can see that it subtracts the second shape from the first one. Again, all we need to do is change a couple parameters for the dimensions of the box and immediately upon previewing, it's a different size. The next thing I'm gonna do is create the lip that goes around the inside edge of the box in order for the lid to fit nice and flush with the top of the box. I'm gonna again use the exact same post command, but I'm gonna subtract out the lip that I want that's what I specified above in the lid lip parameter. And with the height, of course, I'm just gonna take the height of the box minus the lid thickness, which again was declared above. And I'm gonna add a little bit to the height because sometimes OpenSCAD, if you make the dimensions exactly right, it doesn't know what to do when it's flush with the surface of the object. By adding one to it, it's gonna definitely clear the surface of the top of the box. And so it's going to subtract properly. As you can see, I included it within the curly brackets of the difference function that I used to subtract the hollow from and so when we preview that you can also see it does create that lip all the way around. Just like all the other functions it's completely scalable to the parameters that we've mentioned above and we could remove the lip by making it zero or we could increase it to a bigger amount and have fun with really making it whatever we want it to be. For me I really like four millimeters as the total wall thickness with a two millimeter lip but here you could change it to ten, five, whatever you'd like it to be in order to get the right dimensions for a box that you're creating. If you don't need a lid, maybe you would stop here, but I'm gonna move on and create the support post in order to have a lid that can be screwed on and attached securely. Again, we're just gonna call that same posts function, and now we're gonna declare the post diameter in addition to the wall thickness in order to get the location of where we want those posts to be. As you start playing around with these things, it'll start to make sense, but that's what I needed to do in order to get it to work. I'm also starting the Z position slightly below the floor of the box so again it's going to have that overlap and we're not going to have any gaps in our model and then the height I'm going to remove the lid thickness because I don't want the post to interfere and I'm also going to add another 0.5 to make up for the 0.5 that I set it in the base. When we preview it you can see it created our post perfectly. The next thing I need to do is create the screw holes for those posts. I'm gonna use the reference points that I made with the support posts because they're already starting in the correct origin. I just need to change the diameter. So instead of using the same post diameter, I'm instead gonna use the hole diameter and otherwise it's exactly the same as the other. As you can see, if I preview it here, it does stick up a little bit just to show you where it is. And of course, all we need to do is wrap those two shapes in the difference function and it'll cause the hole to be created inside those support posts. That's it for the box. Let's start with the lid. We're gonna use the same post function to create the lid as well. And this time we're just gonna to need to subtract the lid tolerance in order to make the lid just a little bit smaller dimension so it won't be too tight of a fit. You can adjust that. I like 0.5 millimeters all the way around, which gives it a one millimeter clearance in total. I'm gonna to change the height of to begin at the top of the box. And I add a few on here just so that it's gonna flow above instead of being exactly in place. As you can see, if I preview it, it's floating about five millimeters above. If we take the five units away, we see that it fits nice and flush. I'll put it back in so you can see it's separated and that's where I like to have it when I'm working on the rest of the model. 
The next thing we need to do is create the holes in the lid and we're going to use the dimensions exactly from the holes in the support posts for the X and Y because they're already in the correct place. We'll change the Z height in order to match the height of where we actually created our lid and the height of the cylinders is going to be the lid thickness plus a little bit more again to make sure that we clear the full model and don't have any errors when we create our STL file. The hole diameter I'm going to use as well but I'm going to add a little extra so that the screw doesn't have to be threaded into the lid only into the base. As you can see I left the height higher than it needed to be. It could have just been slightly more than the lid itself. You could leave it as is or change it. It isn't really going to matter because we're going to be subtracting it from the lid anyway. As you can see I did correct it here and if we wrap that in a difference command you're going to subtract the holes from the lid and there we are. Now those holes line up properly. You are going to see they look a little rough right now because we haven't smoothed out the model by adding more faces to it. But that's exactly what we need to create the base box and it works perfectly. If we go in and we want to smooth it at the end it's a lot faster to preview if we don't but we can just go in there and add the special function dollar sign $fn equals a higher amount. The open sky documentation says that you can use 50 or 100 but it doesn't recommend going over 100 because it takes a lot longer to render. Depending on the speed of your computer it could take several minutes to complete the model using 50 or 100 as opposed to not declaring it in the first place in which case it's got a lot lower number. Just to show you again all of these parameters stay consistent all the way through and we can create a different sized enclosure just by tweaking any one of these variables. It's incredibly powerful to think that I could create almost any sized enclosure that I need because I already have the generator made and all I need to do is put in the dimensions I need to get from it. Created the model, sent it to my 3D printer. This one's just a 75 by 50 by 20 model, so it's pretty small. But it was great to see the model take shape from the design phase all the way through the print and the finished product, which fits great. The clearance was perfect, and it's ready to be assembled if I can find a project small enough to use it. And if it's too small, I'll just create a new model and use those dimensions instead. So that's everything you need to know in order to create this enclosure generator that can create any size enclosure that your 3D printer can handle. Of course, if you want to add holes to any of the surfaces, it's easy to do that with OpenSCAD as well. So take a look at what options exist. But having these parameters already set, you can create a box of nearly any dimension. Even with the most flexible graphical design software, I'm pretty sure you can't create a model that quickly with just a few different parameter changes. What kind of enclosure are you looking to make? Let me know in the comments or send me an email. I'm always happy to hear from you for things that you've made, your own experiences with OpenSCAD, or even suggestions for future projects. What would you like to see me make next? If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning. Thanks again to my 3D filament supplier, 3dprintingcanada.com. I've got a bunch of new projects lined up for 2021, and I can't wait to share them all with you. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, even the ones you build one line of code at a time, don't be afraid to be balder.